All right then, gang. So, so far, we're doing some very basic validation to check that an input field actually has a value when a user clicks submit, but we're still not checking if that value is the correct type. Like this could be a name and I could click submit and that's valid in the eyes of this form so far. We want to check that that actually is an email. This is a title and this is a comma separated list of ingredients. So we need to validate those things on the server inside this script. Now, the way we're going to do that in PHP is by using a combination of things. First of all, we're going to use some filters or rather a filter to validate the email and filters are built into the PHP language to help us validate things like this. Now, PHP only has filters for certain things. Emails are one of them, but they don't have a filter for a comma separated list or a title. So we need to validate this ourselves. And for that, we're going to use some regular expressions. Now, I'm not going to focus in this video about what regular expressions are. That's something separate from PHP. We use them in all languages. And for me to delve right into that would take about 15 lessons in itself. I do have a whole series on regex, regular expressions. And if you want to learn more about them and how to use them to validate certain things, then I'm going to leave the link to that series down below and you can go and check those out. OK, and that will really help you when you work with forms in any programming languages. OK, so either way, we're going to use a built in filter to validate the email from PHP. And then we're going to use a function to use some regular expressions to validate the title and the ingredients. All right. So it sounds complex. It's not overly complex, but let's try it. So first of all, the email. So then. So far, we're checking it's not empty. And if it's not empty, it's echoing out the email. Now, I don't want to do that anymore. Instead, what I'm going to do is create a new variable. I'm going to call that email and I'll set it equal to dollar sign underscore post and then email. So we're grabbing that value from the post array now, the value that was submitted to us. That's if there's something in it. OK, and we're storing that now inside email. I'm doing this because we might be using this a few times going forward over the next tutorials. And now we have it handily stored in this variable. OK, then. So now I'm going to check that this is of the correct structure. It is actually an email. And that's what I'm going to use a PHP filter for. So we'll do an if check and then we're going to use a method called filter underscore var. So filter variable. So inside this method or this function is going to take two parameters. First of all, the value that we want to check, which is this thing right here. So the email, right? That's what we're going to check. So we're going to copy that and paste it in as the first argument. The second argument is going to be the type of filter that we want to apply. Well, we want to apply the filter underscore validate underscore email. So that, like I said, that filter is built in to PHP. So we're passing these two things into the function. So what that function is going to do is take this value that a user enters and pass it through this validate email filter. And that is going to make sure that this is a valid email. So it has an at symbol in it. Then it ends in something like .co.uk or .com. OK, it's a valid email. That's going to check it for me. Now, if it is a valid email, that's going to return true. And this code is going to execute right here. Now, what I want to do is echo something out if this is not true. OK, if there's a problem with it, because then I want to echo out some kind of error. So if this returns true, then this code's going to fire. Now, I could do an else statement to fire something else, but then we'd be placing nothing inside this if statement. And that's a waste of coding space, I think. So instead, I'm going to place the negation operator in front of this right here. Now, remember, when we looked at comparisons and booleans and things like that, if we placed the negation operator in front of the equals, it says is not equal to. It kind of reversed it. OK, so what this is going to do is reverse whatever comes after it. So if this returns true and the email is actually valid, then if we put this in front of it, it's going to turn that true value into false. OK, so if it's valid, then this if statement will evaluate to false. However, if it's not valid and this statement returns false, then the whole thing with the negation operator in front of it is going to return true. And then we can fire what's in here. OK, so now we can put the error inside here 
and the error is going to fire when the validation does not pass. So the error I want to place is going to be email must be a valid email address. And looks like I'm shouting at them there. So let me do that again. It must be a valid email address. Okay. So I hope all that makes sense that I just explained to do with this negation operator and what this returns. We're going to do a similar thing now with the other fields. But before we do that, let me just check if this works. So what I'm going to do now is refresh the page. First of all, in fact, I'm going to press enter and we get an error. That's probably because we've missed off our semicolon somewhere. We have schoolboy error. So let me save that again and I'm going to refresh. And now if I type something in like Sean, then submit, we can see the email must be a valid email address. All right. So we know that this is not valid. However, if I type in Sean at the net ninja.co.uk and click submit, then we shouldn't get that error. Perfect. Because that is valid. So that works. Okay, then that's the first step done. Whew. Now we need to check these two things and that's title, not title. We need to check these two things. First of all, the title and secondly, the ingredients. Now we used a built in filter right here, the filter validate email. PHP had that included in the language. It doesn't have one for a title because there's no set kind of validation for a title, is there? And it doesn't have one to validate a comma separated list. At least I don't think so. So we're going to have to validate these ourselves using a different kind of function and some regex. OK, like I said, regex is not going to be covered properly in this course. If you want to learn about it, I'll leave the link down below. But essentially what regex does or regular expressions do is they look at a string of characters and they match it to a pattern described by the regular expression. And if that pattern matches what's in the string, then it's going to pass the test. If it doesn't match, then it's not going to pass the test. For example, in title, we could create a regular expression pattern that must include uppercase letters, lowercase letters, and maybe spaces only. If it's got any kind of special characters, like an at symbol, then it's not going to pass. So we're going to create a regular expression to test for that pattern. Now we're going to do a similar thing to up here. First of all, we're going to delete this and we're going to store the title inside a little variable called title. We'll grab it from dollar underscore post and grab the title from that post array. Okay. Then we're going to do an if check and in here, the function this time is not going to be filter var, but it's going to be p reg underscore match. Okay. So preg match if you like, like this. And this is how we match something to a regular expression. It takes two parameters. The first parameter this time is the regular expression that we want to match it against. And the second parameter is going to be the title itself. Okay. So then in here, the regular expression, I'm just going to copy this from my GitHub repo. Remember, you can get this as well. It's lesson 20 in the branch drop down, and I'm going to paste it in there. So we place it in quotes, it starts and ends with a forward slash. And this is the regular expression. So we're saying right here from the start to the end. That's what these symbols means. We want any lowercase, uppercase, or spaces right here as many times as the user wants. So it can be any length, at least one character long. OK, that's what that regular expression means. So the second argument we need to pass in here is the title itself. That's what we're going to match it against. All right. OK, then. So if it passes, this regular expression is going to return true. Again, we want to only output an error if it's false. So we need to negate it here for the same reason as up here. All right, then. So now we'll echo the error and that error is going to be title must be letters and spaces only. OK. OK, cool. So now we have that error. Let's give this a whirl. I'm going to place in a valid email. I'll just say a at b dot com. One of the simplest emails you can get. And the pizza title is going to be um, blah at 123. Now we have an at symbol in here and 123. They're not valid for a title. We didn't say that in the regular expression. So this should echo out the error. I'm going to submit. And now we can see the title must be letters and spaces only. OK, so let's give this a whirl again. A at B dot com. This time for the title, I'll say Ninja Supreme. Sounds like a good pizza. Submit. 
and now we only get this error. At least one ingredient is required. So this passed this time, okay? We're going to do a very similar thing using the same function for the comma separated list of ingredients. So let me just copy all that stuff there, delete this junk, and place this in instead. Now, I want to replace this with ingredients and also this with ingredients from the post array. And then we want to replace this with ingredients as well. And we want to match against a different type of regular expression here. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to grab the other one from my repository as well. It's a bit longer this one. I'm going to copy it and paste it over here. Again, you can see it's a long regular expression, starts with a forward slash, ends with a forward slash, and this is looking for a comma separated list, okay? Again, if you want to learn more about regex, check out my other playlist on that, and you'll know exactly how I've done this, okay? So anyway, that there is going to check that this ingredient string is a comma separated list of words, if you like, okay? Which is what ingredients are, words. Now, again, we're using the negation operator because if it passes, it's true. We want to negate that so that we only echo out an error if this returns false, all right? And the error this time is going to be ingredients must be a comma separated list, all right? So if I save this now, what I'm going to do is say a at b.com, we'll call this the triple B, <laughs> really exciting. And then we'll just do something random in here like um, tomato at, at, at semicolon, right? That's not a valid ingredient. So let's submit and it says ingredients now must be a comma separated list. All right, let's try this again. A at B.com, pizza title CCC, we're taking it up a notch. And then the ingredients is gonna be tomato, cheese and mushrooms. Okay, submit. This is valid, right? Submit. And now no error. So that there, my friends, is all our basic validation for this form pretty much done. If this was a real life application, maybe you'd do a bit more validation as well. This will do for this project. Okay, so now we've got the validation done. In the next video, what I'd like to do is take the errors that are currently being shown here and show them in the form instead. And also, if we enter in something that's valid, like a at b.com and the pizza title which could be ddd if we then you know do something that's not valid here these two are valid right so if we submit we should get the errors but those two values should remain there the second time around so the user doesn't have to type them out again that's just a pain to do so i'm going to show you how we can persist that data in the form as well and show the errors underneath the relevant form fields